Hello, this is Silent Night, and I'm back with another video after all these months. So recently I've taken a bit of a journey down the rabbit hole that are virtual machines. If you don't know what a virtual machine is, it essentially allows you to run an operating system under your current operating system. And in my case, I wanted to try running Windows 11 under Windows 10 so that I could, you know, try it out first before actually upgrading my computers and the company I work with computers because I'm an IT guy. While I was at it, I decided to try something I haven't tried before, and that's installing my video editing software Vegas Pro inside of a virtual machine. Vegas Pro, in my opinion, is the best, worst video editor. <laughs> It's the best because, in my opinion, the workflow is superior to that of Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, HitFilm, or Avid. I might feel this way personally because I'm a music producer. That's where I come from, and I'm used to using a digital audio workstation. And the workflow is very similar to that of a digital audio workstation because Vegas Pro used to be a digital audio workstation. That's what it was designed as for the 1.0 release. Even today, if you wanted to, you could produce a whole song inside of Vegas Pro using VST2 plugins. Magix, if you're watching this, please add VST3 support. Unlike so many non-linear video editors, Vegas allows you to apply effects to individual clips, to the tracks, and even the master channel. The way you manipulate clips inside of Vegas is very similar to the way you manipulate them in my actual digital audio workstation, Reaper. And actually the reason for this, as I found out later, is the creator of Reaper, Justin Frankel, was inspired by Vegas. And then I started using Vegas, which was made by Sonic Foundry at the time and since Sony bought. And uh, it actually, I, I, worked, I really liked Vegas and it was a big influence in terms of how Reaper initially functioned. Um, but uh, Vegas became uh, more of a video editor than, than an audio editor and, um, and it never, uh, it may have been by this point, but it didn't have MIDI support, it didn't have virtual instrument support, it was really about using it as a tape machine. Um, so that sort of became a, a limitation that I was interested in, in uh, doing other things with. And they had Acid at the time, which was a separate composition tool, um, which, you know, using both of those is not really the best workflow, uh, probably. Right. It wasn't for me anyway. Sure. So, uh, so, so Vegas ended up influencing a lot of what I did after that. Um, but unlike the other top competing nonlinear video editors and unlike Reaper, Vegas Pro's code base has got to be an absolute mess. It's normal for Vegas to crash once every two hours, and on a bad day it can crash up to once every five minutes. I'll admit, I've seen an improvement with the latest version of Vegas Pro, Vegas Pro 19, that came out earlier this year, but it still crashes more than it should. All this crashing got me wondering if this is just my software configuration on my computer, I mean I haven't reinstalled Windows for like 7 years, or if this kind of crashing is just normal for everybody. Installing Vegas inside of these virtual machines on a fresh copy of Windows 11 will help me understand two things. One, if Vegas is even compatible with Windows 11. Two, if Vegas is crashing on my host machine because of some weird software configuration, and if I just need to take a day and reset Windows entirely. Through installing Vegas Pro on a bunch of different virtual machines, I concluded that it is not a problem with my software configuration on my host computer. So this isn't really going to help me solve my crashing issue. I actually managed to clear up some crashing issues by changing the configuration of Vegas Pro after I made this video. So I might make a video on that topic another day. The good news is that I still learned some things through my little experiment. The first is that Vegas Pro runs just as well on Windows 11 as it does on Windows 10. And the other thing I discovered, it is entirely possible to use Vegas Pro in a virtual machine if you want to. You however cannot render using a graphics card unless you pass your full graphics card through to your guest operating system. This means that if you only have one graphics card, your host system will no longer have a graphics card. Some virtual machine software allows you to share your graphics card between your host system and your guest system. However, they need to use their own driver in the guest operating system to achieve this. Vegas simply won't recognize these virtual machine display drivers as valid graphics cards and therefore you can't use them to render. So in my case, even though Vegas runs fine in a virtual machine, it wouldn't make sense for me to do it because I can't take advantage of GPU rendering. And as we all know, CPU rendering is so much slower than GPU rendering. And that brings me to the third thing I learned while doing this little experiment, and it's probably the reason you're watching this video to begin with. In an effort to see 
if any virtual machine software would allow me to do GPU rendering inside of Vegas without passing a graphics card through. I tried out three of the most popular free virtual machine softwares, Hyper-V, VirtualBox, and VMware. As I said earlier, none of them would let me use the shared GPU in Vegas to do a GPU render, but I didn't want the experiment to go to waste, so I went ahead and did CPU renders inside of all of the virtual machines to see which virtual machine software gives the best performance right now. As you can see from my graphs here, Hyper-V is the clear winner when it comes to CPU performance in a virtual machine coming in only one minute behind the host system. VMware Workstation 16 comes in at a close second, being only four minutes behind the host system, and VirtualBox lags way behind, coming in at 77 minutes in total. Ouch. While I did do all the renders on the same SSD on my computer with no background apps running, please note that this is nowhere near a scientific test. There are several variables that changed that probably shouldn't have if I were doing a scientific test. For starters, my host system is on Windows 10 and all the virtual machines are on Windows 11. Additionally, none of the virtual machines officially support Windows 11 yet. And furthermore, VMware and VirtualBox both require modifications to allow Windows 11 to even install. Windows 11 requires TPM support and secure boot support, but VMware Free does not have TPM support and VirtualBox does not have TPM support or official security your boot support. Hyper-V has both of these already. Also remember, this test only shows CPU performance, not overall performance. While Hyper-V kicks butt in CPU performance, and I'd probably recommend it for, you know, running virtual servers, it wasn't the best desktop experience. I would give that award to VMware. VMware allows you to share your full GPU with your host system, and while Vegas Pro can't take advantage of this for GPU rendering, the overall desktop experience can, and it's noticeable. The desktop experience does feel a lot smoother on VMware than Hyper-V. Hyper-V does not have any shared GPU functionality at all anymore because Microsoft removed it due to a security vulnerability. Like VMware, VirtualBox also has this functionality, however it's limited to sharing only 256 megabytes of your graphics card VRAM, which is nowhere near modern levels of graphics card VRAM. The last thing to keep in mind when talking about virtual machine performance is that some of these virtual machine softwares are better at running certain operating systems or running on certain operating systems. Some examples I can think of this are Hyper-V not being able to run some Linux distros or not very well, while VirtualBox could run them all day, or how QEMU just runs better on Linux than it does on Windows. QEMU being another virtual machine software I tried for this video, but it just got stuck and froze on the Windows 11 installation. There are also other things to keep in mind other than just performance. For example, VirtualBox and QEMU are free and open source, but Hyper-V and VMware are only closed source. And additionally, Hyper-V is really only free if you already have Windows 10 or 11 Pro. So taking all of that into consideration, here are my virtual machine software recommendations. I recommend Hyper-V to anyone who wants to run a virtual server, as it appears to manage the CPU processing more efficiently than any other virtual machine software I've tried. However, if you don't want to run a virtual server and you don't need the top tier CPU performance out of your virtual machine, I would go with VMware as the overall desktop experience will feel smoother thanks to the GPU sharing with your host system. As for VirtualBox, I wouldn't use it for Windows virtual machines as the desktop experience when I tried it was barely usable. But I'll recommend it for anyone wanting to run, you know, some obscure version of Linux that is not supported by Hyper-V or VMware, and I would recommend it to anybody who wants to support open source software. Lastly, I recommend QEMU to anybody trying to emulate an actual hardware chip, as it might be the only one that even has that functionality, but I wouldn't recommend it for really any other purpose because, I mean, it's not very user-friendly. You run the thing from a command line. So if you're not comfortable with that, I'd stay away from QEMU. All my recommendations here are subject to change when these virtual machines 
software is actually add proper Windows 11 support. But for now, that is my verdict. If this video helped you at all, make sure to put a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.